Ginua the first, the son of the Oba of Benin, left and with the, with the seventy with the seventy chiefs that followed him and came through the River Rhine area where the Yoruba speaking people that had migrated and were were there to colonize the place. But when the way he arrived from the way he carried himself when he had his son, his Ijiji, organization, his organization and all that, appealed to the people, to Ishakiri, Inode Ishakiri, and they accepted him as king. So over time, he adopted, even though the tradi from, what, from what they'll tell you, the chiefs, the titles of the traditional chiefs are still Edo, still Benin. And the people, the, the, king, the kingship, the royalty, the monarchy, over time, adopted the language of the people that the king was, the king was ruling over. So it's not, the case of the Shekhar is not peculiar. You find it happened in Rome, uh, Romulus and, his, and uh, his brother was supposed to have been nurtured by a she-wolf and all that. But we have this tradition. The, the important point is that we are where we are. The Shekhar are where we are. And by the act of God or history, the chieftaincy, the royalty, the monarchy derived from Benin. And over the period since 1453, 1480. 1480 till now, we have one string, same family of the royalty remains, the title remains, but the language of the people that the he met, king, that he met is still Yoruba. And that's how what happened three weeks ago happened on the 12th of December, where we crowned the new Ulu. The Oni, of course, was there. The, we've had that link mm. to the sources from Udua. Mm. So that has been perhaps okay. perhaps a direct answer to your question <clears throat> as to why yeah. we never really can tell what they saw to make them accept the, uh, the crown prince of Benin to be their king. We don't know what went through their minds, but we know that it happened. And that's good enough for us. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir Lloyd, the, the new Olu of Wari has come in. Yes. As one of the chiefs in there. Yes. What would you say his dream is for Wari? It, it, we've been happy to have him. Because his dream is a dream of progressives, progressive chiefs. Who want the Wari Kingdom to expand? Who want uh, employment, the unemployed to be employed? He, he wants also peace. Therefore, is a man who wants reconciliation. He grew up among us. He grew up among us. He was not thrown upon us. We saw him grow. I'm older than him. But today, he's the king. Mm. And you know the kind of respect and the kind of love the Shekhalis have for their king. is from time immemorial. And therefore, he's been groomed. And this time around, he knows his people. He knows the way. He knows our problems, and he, he, so we are going to have little difficulty working with him to realize these dreams, which are also our own dreams. Okay. Well, Chief Manet, the in eight, 1720, between 1720 and 1800, yeah. you had um, a king, Olu Eredua. Yes, Eredua the first. Okay, Olu Eredua the first. Mm -hmm. Now it says that he expanded worry politically and commercially. Yeah. Now, Chief Lori Weber has talked about the fact that he has a dream, which is a dream of the people. That's the, the, new people, Olu. the new Olu. Yes. Can you, in specific terms, say what the new Olu is likely to be looking at as regards, he's talked about where the youth will be employed, where the kingdom will be established the more? We have 
norms and uh, world view and uh, levels of standards in everything that we do <clears throat> and he undoubtedly has been exposed to this right from birth so he knows what is approvable by his people and there are things that have also been done by previous Olus creating a platform for him not to destroy but to build on and improve on that so even though we will not take words of his mouth to speak for him but we know that these are the things he has come into to fulfill yeah um, history is good and I remember those days we used to have history. I don't know now we're talking about uh, don't have history not, classes. no hi history classes, but why is this history of worry very important at this time? Um, well, okay. Yes, it is important because if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you are heading for. Good. We have a tradition which we hold very, very dearly our hearts. We have values, core values. A typical example is peace, law and order, refinement, progress, harmony, peace. I believe Chief Mene will tell you shortly the role we've played before Nigeria, before 1914 amalgamation, even during the interregnum of 88 years that ended in 1936, interregnum means the Olusip was Disrupted. the monarchy. The monarchy. After the death of Olu Akembua in 1848. 48. 1848. 1848. That ended in 1936 with the coronation of his late grand grandson, that Ginua II, 1936. We had what we call Gofina, that's governor. We had Diari, we had Shaninomi, we had um, the, the last one was Donuma, Olomu, Olomu, and Nana, Nana. Olomu. <laughs> and Nana his son, but I've heard of Nana of Kuku. Mm. To the extent that before, when Nigeria was amalgamated, Southern Protectorate amalgamated to the Northern Protectorate in 1914 by Lord Lugard. The, the out of, to manage the amalgamation, Nigeria, this time we're telling you all before 1914, there was no Nigeria. When we had uh, Ginua and the others, there was no Nigeria. But when Nigeria came to be in 1914, out of the five uh, traditional paramount chiefs that Lugard appointed to help manage and advise him on the amalgamation, you had the Oni, uh, the you Oni had of Ife, the uh, um, Alafi of Oyo. Uh, uh, Hensh of Calabar, Calabar uh, Sadana of Sokoto, uh, the Emma of Kanu, and Dornuma of Dor Wolf, Dor Numa. There were five out of those five that advised the Lord Lugard on the management in the indirect rule that the British brought in 1914 was a prominent Ishakiri chief, Dornuma, out of the five. Because the, the about Verami had gone, the, the Ulu was not there, Nana had gone. So we had those people. So history is important that we've played a role. The Shakiri Wari had played a role throughout history. Before, before uh, Nigeria was founded in 1914, mm -hmm. and since then, to the extent that the first secretary to the government, a Jewishi, secretary to the government, what an insecure person. Okay, right. so we, we are really winding down now. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Chief uh, Mene, if we don't remember so much of what we have heard of Worry this morning, what should be that thing that we should say, yes, this is it about Worry? 
what to remember is worry um, is made of our people who are very conscious of their identity and who seek very much to share with others the values they have and to expand their horizon and do the utmost that they can. Right. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. It's been nice going back in history and learning one or two things about the Wari Kingdom. We've had in the house Chief Mrs. Rita Lori Ogbebo. She's the Igba of Wari. Thank you for being here. And of course, uh, Chief Brown Mene, who is the historian, and of course, the Ogwa Olusan of Wari. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you very much. And Mr. Godfrey Etinkeshi. First Indigenous Director of Chevron, who is retired. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on a quick break and Sunrise will be back.